Video games often present us with totally impossible stuff that could never happen in real life, right? Well, not this stuff. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 video game things you won't believe exist in real life. Starting off with number 10, it's the flying platform from Metal Gear Solid 3. Now these were basically one person aircraft that seem totally absurd when you look at them, but they're actually based on a real design. The Hiller VZ-1 Pawnee, also known as the Hiller flying platform. This one was only ever developed as a prototype for the US Army, but it was an interesting design where you basically stood on a huge propeller. Now the ones in the game were not huge propellers, they were obviously little jet engines and that's where they deviate, and there were only six of the Hiller flying platforms ever actually existed, one of which you can actually go see at the Hiller Aviation Museum, which is located in San Carlos, California. It's probably the strangest looking personal aircraft but recently they've been working on creating a jet propelled kind of take off on the Iron Man suit that also really exists. I don't know, it's pretty wild. I don't think you could get me to do it though. <laughs> Wait a second, I'm a bird. I don't need a personal flying machine. And number nine is the giant crazy spoilers from Grand Theft Auto V. Not like plot spoilers, like on the back of a vehicle, that thing that on like a race car might have some actual difference because you're going at such a speed and the vehicle is engineered with such aerodynamic precision, it can actually have some effect on drag. In real life, you see them on lots of different cars, like old Honda Civics, which are not like that. But yeah, if you go around and Google giant spoilers on cars you will find some pretty amazing stuff stuff that frankly looks very much like it should be in Grand Theft Auto 5 or perhaps Saints Row because if I'm going to be totally frank you will find things that are too crazy for Grand Theft Auto the phenomenon is called Bosizoku and it has actually been around for decades it started as a youth counterculture in Japan in the 1950s that became popularized in the 1980s and 90s it was basically a gang that did that with motorcycles and it grew to cars as part of the culture. At number eight is burning the Wicker Man in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, it probably seems totally insane that you would, and this is a spoiler, just in case you haven't made the choice to spare or kill a certain person, but it probably seems totally insane that you would put a person inside a large Wicker Man and burn it as a sacrifice to the gods. Well, people did that. That's a thing that people did. I, I don't think they do it now. I hope they don't do it now. But they wouldn't actually just put one person in. They'd build these wicker men and put a lot of people in. If you look at this 18th century illustration of a wicker man, it's chock full of people. Basically, what they would do is very similar to actually what they were doing in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. They would sacrifice people for the good of crops or weather or whatever. It's actually the idea that's behind more modern things like the Burning Man Festival. Festival, and of course, the Wicker Man movies. The best of which, of course, features Nicolas Cage screaming about bees. Number seven is the Fulton recovery system from Metal Gear Solid 5, which is, I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, that's the most absurd possible thing. Why would they put this into a serious game that features military stuff? Even though, yes, it is Metal Gear Solid, which is known to do silly things, but it roots those silly things in reality. Oh, it's probably real. I'm going to look it up. And so we find that yes, the fault and recovery system, the thing where you put balloons on guys and they fly up into the air so that you can recover them, that's real. That's not even something that they changed a little bit for video games, like it just exists in the same way it does in Metal Gear Solid 5. I mean, maybe it's not used as liberally. I mean, it's pretty funny to overuse because you're putting guys on balloons, they fly away. I mean, that's hilarious. But it's also actually real. It was developed in 1950 by the CIA and the Air Force using weather balloons and nylon lines. Ultimately, aircraft use grappling hooks to grab onto these unconscious balloon men. Actually, I don't think that it's generally used for unconscious people, but I don't know. I'm not gonna rule anything out. It's really, it's silly. Like they experimented on pigs for a long time, you know, to make sure it would work. And one of the tests involved the pig accidentally getting spun around at 125 miles per hour. And when they pulled it up onto the aircraft, it was totally disoriented. But when it recovered from being, you know, dizzy beyond belief, it attacked the crew on the plane. 
And number six, microwave power transfer technology that you have seen in Ace Combat 7 by the Arsenal Bird drone. So basically, there is a dome on the drone, which sounds very silly, that receives microwave transfers of electricity and can therefore be charged while flying in the sky. You're probably thinking, that's dumb. That's not real. Who came up with that? Well, I mean, Tesla was working on that stuff. He certainly wasn't the first when he was doing it. But you've at least seen a wireless charger for a phone before, right? You put a phone down on a pad and it charges without plugging it in anything. Well, that's this technology on a smaller scale. There's actually two methods of wireless power transfer. The phone one is referred to as near field and it creates electromagnetic fields that it transmits electricity through, while far field is more along the lines of what we're talking about with the arsenal bird. Far field techniques are referred to as power beaming or radio radiative techniques and you can do it with a microwave like it's done in the game or you can do it with laser beams the trick is you do have to be aiming it directly at a receiver for the electricity to actually be received i mean in theory you absolutely could do the arsenal bird it's kind of a matter of practicality though and number five is the stealth throwing dagger from Demon Souls. And the reason you might not think this one exists is because it looks vaguely impractical. I mean, you not only have a weapon, but you also have a throwing weapon that could be used in various different ways. It kind of seems like a Swiss army knife, but it seems like it must be made up because this would be something that is in olden times. Not, not, not the case. There's actually a knife called the Mambale, which is exactly what this thing is it's actually from Africa though and there's a large number of different variations that exist in terms of configuration of blades how you throw it exactly how you would use it it's a pretty badass weapon actually and number four is the Black Tusk Warhounds from The Division 2. Now, you might see these and go, oh, I know what this is. Like, you may actually already know and believe these things exist in real life. But even knowing that, you have to sit and think about it for a minute. These robots that exist in a video game that we've actually seen in practical testing for over a decade. You can find videos of these things that go back to like 2010 come from this company called Boston Dynamics. Now, the one in the game isn't specifically from Boston Dynamics, but is most likely based off of that. At this point, Boston Dynamics has much more advanced looking ones than what they actually probably base this off of, but the advanced looking ones actually look a lot less badass, a lot less scary, and I think that's the point that they modeled them off there. There's also security robots in Watch Dogs 2 that are along this same type of technology. I mean, you can just buy the Nightscope K5 security robot it's pretty much the same thing i don't i don't know why you would but you can and number three is the huacha from ghost of tsushima obviously not all of these are high tech but this is actually pretty low tech it's a pretty cool little item where you would put like a bunch of arrows into a thing and it would fire all of them that's a hundred percent real huacha translates literally into fire cart it was more or less an organ gun like imagine the principles behind an organ that you grind like in the park when you see a guy grinding an organ and a monkey dances it's that but instead of playing music it shoots several dozen iron-headed arrows or bolts it was actually developed and used in the 1590s and to me there's not much else to say here it's just a really badass weapon that really existed and number two is the mail order houses from red dead redemption two you couldn't do that in one. We didn't have the technology. Basically, a discussion over a fire involves Uncle pushing John to demolish his shack, which is, you know, not an ideal place of living. And then after they tear it down, Uncle tells John about a guy in Blackwater that can help him with a pre-cut house. Probably one of the most interesting aspects about this, where during the late 19th century, there were a ton of mail order houses that were mail ordered out of a cat and constructed on site. Now, this was a precursor to like modern modular housing where pieces of the house are made in a factory and then assembled elsewhere. Here, basically, you had the parts of a house cut to spec, again, at like a yard or a factory and shipped to a location to be assembled by people on site. It sounds silly, but it actually was one of the most important innovations of the 19th century. 
And finally at number one, the Fat Man nuclear catapult in the Fallout series. Now, what exists in real life is not exactly the same thing as this frankly absurd looking weapon, which catapults a small scale nuclear warhead, but it's not terribly far off from the miniature nuclear weapons devices that were developed during the Cold War. The Davy Crockett was a small scale one person nuclear launching device. And although, like I said, it's not the same thing as a catapult that shoulder mounted, the fact that a single person could launch a nuclear warhead from any position that they presumably could find on foot is both terrifying and puts lots of things into perspective for us all. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If this video was something you enjoyed, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.